Yes, I want to welcome you to our next session, which is uh, getting the modeling evidence to policymakers or to programs. I want to just share with you that um, this is the, so far the outstanding problem or gap um, as far as modeling ecosystem is concerned. Um, very many modelers across the world are able to build the models and so we have so many models out there. We have codes which are available for us to uh, adjust or improve. But the, the gap which we have is how do we have this modeling evidence get into policy? So for the last three, three years, I've gotten involved into this space. And um, I'm just going to share some of the insights that we have been discussing at a global level, but also at regional level, at African level as well. And some of them are aimed at sparking a conversation among ourselves because um, not only modeling evidence, but even any other scientific evidence that you've been generating, it can be pretty frustrating if you come up with very nice recommendations and very nice observations and nothing is, 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 is taken on. Um, and you're going to see that um, there is a lot behind the scenes for us to make that happen. And I'm going to cite some examples that you could be familiar with. Yeah, so, um, so as part of our outline, shall have some definitions, but also shall try to dive into the, the scope of uh, translating models into policy insights or policy briefs, but also audience analysis and how do you frame the, 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 the information and we'll dive into a policy brief uh, formulation. So in terms of uh, definitions, evidence refers to the information insights or conclusions derived from application of mathematical statistical models to a specific problem or data. So, for example, we now have some model outputs and we have some model conclusions and we have some model recommendations. So that's the evidence. That what we have now is called evidence. So when you look at policy is an agreed government position using results, insights, predictions, or recommendations from a mathematical or statistical model to inform design or to adjust policies. So if you remember yesterday um, in a Sheng's presentation, he was able to tell us how policymakers used their um, John Hopkins COVID-19 dashboard. He was, he was citing examples, how uh, South Korea was making decisions based on their dashboard. He was quoting examples of how, how the US president was making uh, decisions and um, resolutions and uh, lockdowns based on their uh, their dashboard or their evidence that they were creating on the GHU dashboard. So those uh, those those statements, those policy pronouncements, those policy declarations, those presidential addresses, that is part of that's part of policy. And so you should take that um, very strongly. So policymakers are individuals or entities responsible for formulating, adjusting, or deciding on policies. For example, in Uganda, policymakers are many in Uganda. Uh, you can just, just use the chat and we type some of the policy policymakers that you know in Uganda. And you can try to be, you use your, your, your project. You use your project to say, for my project on COVID-19 vaccination, my policymakers would be this and this and the other. Or my project on uh, dengue fever, my policymakers would be uh, would be this and this and so and so. You use the chat and we we text in that right now. I just want to read your. You just use the chat to type um, what you think. What you think are the policymakers regarding your project. Some of them will be cross-cutting, but some of them may be a bit more specific on your project.
Can we type in the chat? I don't see anything. <laughs> I don't see anything. Yeah, so uh huh. So at least I've started coming through, right? Those are policymakers, Minister of Health, um, National TB and Leprosy Program. Okay, let's continue. You can give more than more than one or more than three. There are many. There are more. I just want to see what you what your thoughts are. Keep them. Keep keep typing them. Because knowing the policymakers is a great step in composing your message and composing recommendations. Let's keep our microphones. Um, let's unmute ourselves. I just want to be sure I'm speaking to people around that people are around. Please, please un just unmute yourself. Yeah. So in other words, uh, Maureen is not here. Jessica is not here. Uh, Robert is not here. Win is not here. Let's type in the chat. Who are the policymakers that we will know? Let's just type. So dengue fever, that would be Minister of Health, Minister of Water and Environment, NEMA, NGOs, Malaria Consortium, National TB Program, Global Fund. Let's continue typing. Yeah. WHO, that's true. Okay, let's mute. Let's mute ourselves. Yeah. So that's true. So those are policymakers. Those let's mute ourselves. Yeah, so those are policymakers you've been listing. But they, because they make decisions, they make policies, they make they appropriate resources. Something that you forgot, for example, for Ugandan case, the parliament is a very big policymaker, the president is a very big policymaker, the speaker is a very big policymaker, LOC5 chairperson is all the district chairpersons are strong policymakers, district politicians like speakers, councillors, those are policymakers, the head of Ahead of, of those MDAs, all government agencies, all private agencies, like, a, like for example, which private organization, maybe World Division, maybe UNICEF, those are UN agencies. So all those, those are all policymakers or program leads, which you need to begin paying attention to. MPs are policymakers, uh, vice chancellors, the, all those people are the deans of schools, the principals, all those are policies, they make decisions, they make policies. But even, you, even at your home where you come from, you could be a policymaker at your home where you come from. So the other aspect I want us to talk about is the impact. Um, so when we have a tangible outcome, when we have a change, when we have an effect, when we have an improvement, when we have an adjustment, when we have a lockdown, when we have a change in regimen, when we have a change in in a prescription, when we have a change in a, in a law, those are impacts we are talking about that could that would be coming out of the modeling evidence that you could have proposed or suggested. So, like I was telling you that uh, for the last three years, I've been participating into this this in this field of how do we move. The modeling, the modeling impact into uh, into how do we make the modeling or the modeling outputs or evidence get to policymakers? How do we make policymakers enjoy what we are proposing for them? And it is not a straightforward process. I want to mention it upfront. It is a it is a back and forth process. 
And um, there is you no know, very straightforward way that you know I'm going to use this approach for me to have my evidence get into policymakers. Because um, there are so many dynamics around certain things. Um, if it is the internet, if it, if there is a conference on safe motherhood, safe motherhood, for example, in, in Uganda, it can be an opportunity for you to advance maternal child health related evidences. And at such a time, you can position yourself and write a newspaper article, which will be read by a wider audience. You can go to Munyonyo and make a presentation on the safe motherhood with the evidence you generated in Bugiri, and people will listen to you because the, the, because the permanent secretary minister of health is among the people attending. The heads of maternal child health or the training institutions are attending that conference in Munyonyo. So you have a very big audience. And so it is easy for them to take up what you are, what you are recommending. So it may not be very, very straightforward. Let me give you a very simple example that I recently used. It was a very, it was in a very, in a, not a, in a kind of an informal way. So in June, July, August, I was leading a study in the Misindwa district. The study was about to uh, potential anthrax outbreak. So I did a simulation study on a potential anthrax outbreak. And so I worked on the report. So towards the end of September, we go for a meeting at Speak Resort Munyonyo. That meeting was for an internal preparation for the joint external evaluation for the implementation of the uh, International Health Regulation is 2005. That is what uh, checks whether countries are doing enough to prepare themselves for potential disease outbreak or potential outbreak, like something like that. And when speaking at Munyonyo, so I was among the attendees. So in that meeting, they were in their need of a report which shows the country has been doing risk assessments. So I told them, yeah, uh, two weeks ago, I was able to do a risk assessment in uh, Namisindwa district, and the report is available. So they told me, wait a minute, what did you find? I told them what we found. Can you give us a report? I gave them the report immediately. The report had not been fully, like, fully refined, fully, fully edited, and, but they were very, very happy. They were extremely grateful that there was a report on simulation of anthrax, and they took it on immediately. And in that, in that meeting, we had over 217 uh, delegates from Minister of Health, from Minister of Water, from Minister of Agriculture, from World, Food, World, World Health Organization, from Food Agriculture Organization, from UNICEF, <laughs> from Uganda Wildlife Authority, mentioning them. So what I'm saying is that um, you may you, the, the, getting your evidence into policy level may not be very straightforward, and I'm going to share with you some of the insights and some of the some of the ways you can navigate around to have to have the evidence go. So just to start the story, number one, we needed to train modelers on how to communicate the evidence to policymakers. And this is what we are doing right now. You people are, are modelers, you're mathematical modelers. We must train you on how to communicate this evidence to policymakers. So this training is intentional because I have been in regional meetings. I've been in meetings in Chigali. I've been in meetings in South Africa. I've been in meetings in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in Seattle, Washington. The biggest problem is the modeling evidence not getting to policy. The funders like a Bill and Menda Gates Foundation, they are so they are so disturbed because they fund big projects. A lot of okay, good modeling evidence is generated, but policymakers don't take it up, and they are not comfortable about it. They are not happy about it. So the first thing to do is let's train modelers on how to communicate. The second thing to do let's identify key policymakers for your project. You've just been doing that. So it was intentional for me to ask you to do it. And so the first task I want to give you from today is that um, you write down 10 key partners or policymakers that are relevant for your project. 
in the next presentation, you will first of all hint and say the target stakeholders or the target audience is, then you begin listing the 10. Bullet number three, you need to identify knowledge brokers. Now, who are the knowledge brokers? Let me explain this. Who are the knowledge brokers as far as modeling evidence is concerned? Now, the PS is a very important person. PS means uh, permanent secretary uh, for, for, for members who are not from Uganda. A PS is a very important person. And they make decisions. They make policies. They make recommendations to the, to the parliament. So you need to have her attention or you need to have his attention into the evidence you're generating. Now, the PS has what we call a personal assistant. That personal assistant arranges her diary, arranges her travels, arranges everything, and, and writes a report sometimes on her behalf, and he takes for her to sign. Now, that personal assistant is whom we call a, uh, a knowledge broker. If, the poly, if that personal assistant understands the, the evidence you are generating and understands what the model is saying, that, that knowledge broker will include that in the report to the PS and the PS will pick the message. If the knowledge broker does not understand what you are saying, that your model evidence won't get into the report of the PS. And if it doesn't get into the, into the, into the report of the, B, the PS, you will struggle to, to, to make the PS understand what you are saying or hear what you are saying. So the personal assistant or the epidemiologists who, who, who write reports on behalf of the Minister for Health and the PS or the public relations officer, those are called knowledge brokers. And that, that's very, very important. You may find that... Uh, you're trying to chase an appointment with the Minister for Health, but the person who arranges that is just a driver. So that driver becomes the knowledge broker. So when you want the P when you want the Minister for Health to listen to you, you need to identify that, that, that driver and you train them and you empower them and you, you help them understand what your model is saying. And by the way, once they understand what the model is saying, they can just pick a call right, right away and say, excuse me, are you saying if we do this, we will save this? You say yes. Are you saying that this intervention is better than this one? You say yes. He says, you wait, 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 wait. Because the minister is going to make a speech in Guru tomorrow, I want to tell her about this evidence. You wait, you wait. Let me first call the minister. And so that driver calls the minister and says, you know what? There's a scientist here. He has come with very good evidence. He's saying that if we implement this, we will save this. The minister says, are you sure? I says, yes. Can I have a two-page summary of that? Send me that right on my WhatsApp. Now, if you are so slow and you are not typing, you're not so, if you are so slow, your evidence may delay to reach uh, the minister. But if you're so fast, it can easily reach. So in so doing, you will have access to the minister very fast, just through a knowledge broker. Another point which is important is co-designing, co-designing the modeling research question with the policymakers. Last week we were writing a grant to the to Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and so we were intentional. So we began designing the research question with the policymakers. So we had written the research question is on malaria, on TB, and cystosomiasis. So when we had a meeting with the commissioners from Minister of Health, they said, no, that's not our problem. Our problem is, can we do this and this and the other? You people, you are just wasting your time with those things. Our biggest problem, which, which, which we have no answers now, is can we, have, can we use modeling to tell us this? We said, OK, what more? Can, you, can we use evidence to tell us this? That was last week. And it was very interesting for us because by us working with them, we were able to co-design the research questions that are burdening them. And uh, we have included that in, the, in our grant and fingers crossed if we make it through. And we have intentionally included them on the investigation team and the collaboration team. So if the grant goes through, we will be designing projects with them. We will be moving the journey with them. 
we will be sharing the modeling evidence from time to time. The colleagues in, in Uganda, they know that uh, when we are going to the training in July, I invited the commissioner from Minister of Health to come and open the training. I invited the commissioner to come and have a dinner with Cliff and Robin at the hotel. That evening dinner, those evening coffees, is is where is where sometimes decisions are made. <laughs> so it may not be straightforward, but the key message is co-designing, co-arranging, co-engaging, co-designing with them. It helps a lot. Lastly, we need to train the policymakers and the knowledge brokers. Now, after you have done that, you have identified the, the people, you have trained them, you have engaged them, you have empowered them, you have your evidence. The first thing to do is to choose the right media to use for submitting your work. Currently, there is a very viral, there is a very viral video, very, very viral, talking about the rice and um, arsenic, arsenic levels in Kampala and the water contamination levels. What they did, they chose the media rightly. They chose NBS. NBS shot a video. It's a small video, I think, for two minutes. I think that video has had has hit either one million views. I think over two or two. If they are tracking, it should be, it should have hit either one million views or or two million views in two days because it is being shared all over. So choosing the right media is very important. Let me give an example. If you're writing a, a good policy recommendation and you are choosing a newspaper which the president doesn't read, you're choosing a newspaper which criticizes the government, you are choosing a magazine which criticizes government, trust me, your message, you will put it there, it will be published, yes, but the people you're targeting will not read it. The people you're targeting will not read it. And that comes to us, the scientists. We keep targeting um, last um BMC infectious diseases, BMC malaria. Those are our targets. But I'm telling you, policymakers do not get time to go to last Saint journal and search for information. You know, these guys read the newspaper, they read, they read the new vision. He, he lives home. The driver picks him or picks her. As he's going to office, he buys a newspaper on the way. He begins reading. He is in a jam. He's reading that newspaper. And he gets to office. And he puts the newspaper there. He has finished picking the evidence, which is the newspaper. Actually, if there is something which concerns him, every time he reads a newspaper and he sees something about, about malaria, he picks a phone. He calls the malaria uh, commissioner. Commissioner, I'm seeing this in the newspapers. Can you, write, can, you, can, you, can you prepare a report and a briefing to my office in the next 30 minutes? He stops that phone. And then he reads this and he sees something about TB in the newspaper. It says he calls a TB, uh, TB focal person. Excuse me, program manager. I can see science from McKellar reporting that we have TB cases in the Bugishu region. Is that the case? How come I'm not aware? Did you approve this study? Prepare a report to my office. <laughs> When you hear all that happening, for you, you know that your, your evidence has gotten into policy. When you just hear that, so it may, be, it may not be easy, it may not come well, it may not come right, it may not, it's not easy, it's, it's a slippery journey, but you keep navigating around it. So choose the right media. You cannot say I'm publishing my paper in Lassent if I want Minister for Health Tech Action. You cannot say I'm publishing my paper in BMC malaria if you want National Malaria Control Program to take action. You cannot publish your work in BMC in UK when you want Bugiri district local government to take action on malaria vaccination, which is about to begin in Bugiri. You must go 
to Wugiri notice board, Wugiri district notice board. And you write your small report there and what you what your report found out and you hang it on notice board. You need to go to Bugiri office, no Bugiri, and you ask that where is the DHO's office? They show that that's the block. Then you get your evidence and you pin it on the DH of district health officer's office in that notice board there, and you put it there. If there is a meeting, which is, for example, the technical review meeting on TB, even if they have not invited you, you go there and you listen and you hear them talk and you raise your hand and say, Excuse me. By the way, we did some work on that, and actually we found that A, B, C, H, Y, Z. Hey, who are you? Say, ah, no, my name is uh, my name is Jessica Virunji. I am part of School of Public Health. Do you have that report available? Say, yeah, I have a copy here. I have a copy here. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, tomorrow shall give you five minutes to tell us what you did in your work. <laughs> Choose the right platform. I can talk that, about that for a long time because I've been doing it for a very long time. So for, for some good time. So I know how to navigate the terrain to get uh, things on the table. Select the timing for the evidence generation. Timing is very important. Timing is critical. If there is a cholera outbreak in Namayingo and, uh, and Chikayunga, your evidence must get to police immediately. So when there was an outbreak of, of cholera in Namayunga, Nama, Namayingo and Kayunga, we built a, a model to that effect, and the intervention was cholera vaccine. Um, I, I whispered to one of the members who sit on a national task force. He immediately called me and told me, Abel, I want to give you a slot tomorrow and you come and you present what your model is showing on the national task force now i did not accept that invitation i told him you wait why did i say you wait because we had not validated our model quite well and i was so i was uh, skeptical about what our model was reflecting we had not presented that model for peer review from the members so because um, it has a lot of implications. What I mean is that when you present our, your model there and they rubbish it or and they tear it in two pieces, you lose the reputation. You, in the future, even if you come up with a very nice model, they will never believe you. They say, ah, ah for him, ah, there is nothing he knows. So I turned down that request of saying, come and present the, what your model is showing. So timing is important. Right now, there is, there is a planned program to have the malaria, malaria vaccination program in Uganda. Any evidence on malaria vaccination, this is the time. If, you, you, if your evidence is coming in March next year, when they have rolled out in December this year, you've lost it. Timing is important. If the if current if the, the, the problem is on food safety, Food safety. This is the time to cause a discussion. So, for example, yesterday I did work on water quality analysis in Chibuku district. I published that work in 2022. Now, I had not, I'd never got a good forum to bring the findings. So, yesterday there is a platform we are in called the Scientist Platform. So, we are discussing the issues of the issue of rice and water quality. I was able to now to bring the evidence we have been generating on the issue of the indiscriminate um, positioning of garages in Kampala, indiscriminate positioning of washing bays in Kampala, because um, the garages are everywhere, and when it rains, those uh, waste water, and the, when it rains, the, the, uh, the oils, the glisses, and everything, they find themselves, they find their way into water bodies and... Uh, that's the material we are seeing, that's the arsenic we are seeing, and that is the, that is the, the, head, the heavy metals we are seeing. Uh, there was also some, there was also even about, about aflatoxins. I mean, the storage contain, the, the storage condition is for, you, for, for, for our cereals in, in Uganda. They get rejected in Kenya, they get rejected in South Sudan. And so we did some work in that line as well. But I had never got that chance to bring it out. So when they brought issues of food safety yesterday, 
I was able to retrieve all this evidence. And before I realized they were inboxing me, I'd be like, excuse me, can you prepare a small write-up? about?" I'm like, no, please. My table is full. Again, I just recommend them to my colleague because they have time and my table right now is quite full. But what I'm saying is that um, timing, the timing of your evidence, be very tactical, timing, and be alert. For example, yesterday I was, I was sending something on your, on your group. Um, it was talking about that the government is about to, to start injectable HIV injectables. You will know the government has been using ARVs for some time. And if they are diving into injectables, they are seeking for any evidence along with that line. They are looking for any evidence along with that line. So if you want to be hard, if you want to be, if you want to you make a contribution to HIV uh, man treatment and the vaccination and something, this is the time. Now, the other aspect I also want to bring is that um, currently there is, a, there is a very viral video about to uh, Kabuleta Joseph and the malaria vaccine. He says, you know, the vaccine is nothing. The vaccine is going to kill people. The vaccine, he's promoting vaccine hesitancy. Now, this is the urgent time to bring any evidence on, 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 on malaria vaccine. If you have any evidence which supports the role out of malaria vaccine, this is the time. If you miss this time, if you miss this chance to clarify carburetazi, carburetazi viral video about malaria um, vaccine hesitancy, which he's promoting. If you don't have evidence to counter counteract that or counter counter clear that, then your evidence may never be valuable. So, in other words, don't say I am targeting to submit my evidence to last cent before I come and I tell what the people about this. Because by the time your evidence comes out, um Carburetor's message will have gone viral and people will have rejected the, the vaccine and what your model predicted is not true because the, because the hesitancy levels went high. So I want to conclude by giving another story. Um, in 2022, around the May, there were so many road traffic crashes in Uganda. There was a road traffic crash in, in, in Fort Porto. It killed very many people there. A full a bus, bus, a, I think it was a link, link bus. Killed the people there. There was another road crash in Eastern Uganda. It killed the people there. There was another one again, I think, in, in Eastern Uganda. They crashed people there. So as I was there, the minister called me at 5 a.m. in the morning. My minister, the minister for science, technology and innovation that the president had called her and told her that uh, you are an epidemiologist. Can you put your epidemiology skills to use? Can you tell me what I should do for these issues of road traffic crashes in Uganda? I want a policy, I want a policy, a policy document for cabinet discussion on 9th of May 2020, 2022. So quite fast, I was uh, I was given funds. I was told to go and, go and do an evaluation and write a report. So I ran very fast. I went to the traffic, uh, to the Natete Road Safety, Road Health and Safety um, Directorate. I got data for the last 20, uh, 10 years. I ran to Kaolo Hospital. I got data there. I went to Mulago Hospital, Casualty Ward. I got information there. I went to Nagalama Hospital where they know where most uh, traffic. Uh, traffic, traffic, uh, um, um, patients are normally rushed. I went there, I got information, I wrote a report, I made recommendations, and I'm telling it was discussed in the cabinet. They made resolutions, and that's how they came. You saw they began registering the issues of border borders, they began training, uh, border borders, they began, uh, they even put together the national, national road safety days. I think they happen, uh, they happen every November. They happen every November. That was one of the recommendations that we put it and was discussed in the cabinet and was resolved. Actually, even up to now, um, the UNRWA, the UNRWA, UNRWA uh, website has uh, my paper. It, it cited my paper because my paper was published. 
and um, Yunura cited my paper, even right now it is here on their website, where they declared National, Sa National Safety Day, they quote the work we had done. So what I'm saying is that uh, it was quite fast, it was a very short time, they wanted this information, and uh, yeah, we did it, and it was discussed, and some recommendations were made, and some decisions were made. So before I realized I was being contacted by UNRWA team, they wanted to work with me more, and I told them, no, uh, road, road, road epidemiology, uh, injury epidemiology is not my area where I really want to, to dive in. I just went there because my boss told me to do it, but not in my area really. So I, I, I recommended to my colleague to take it further because I wanted to focus to into infectious disease epidemiology. But I'm just trying to share the timing, the timing, the timing of evidence and having it going to policy. The last example I want to give you is that um, there is a colleague of mine, um, he was, he's doing a PhD on road traffic, road, road traffic, uh, road traffic crashes. Now, when that at that peak, when he saw I was working on this, he told um, he told the husband, the husband called the minister that the minister should stop me from doing data collection because I am coming to only ask what happy what his PhD is all about. So that I should stop generating evidence on road traffic crashes because that's what his PhD is about. So if I bring the evidence now, his PhD is going to lose, is going to lose uh, novelty or is going to lose the value. <laughs> yeah. So I and me, I, I confessed him. I told him, by the way, if you're doing a PhD, if you're doing a master's, and there is something which is happening in your area, I mean the area you're researching in, it's an opportunity for you to contribute. It's an opportunity to bring your evidence into policy. Don't miss that window. Don't miss that window. Can you bring your expertise right now? And within a short time, when I told him that he accepted, I think the, the third day I saw him on TV uh, addressing that very matter. I'm like, yeah, you are now on top of the game. Yeah. So that is it. Timing is critical. Then the last thing to also to think about the language, the colors, because let me tell you, you can be writing a very good message and a very good evidence to NOOP. NOOP is national unity platform. But as long as you have used yellow colors, that report is going to be thrown away. You want or you don't want. Even when it has very good evidence, as long as you've used yellow, the NOOP people are going to, they are going to turn their eyes away from that report. So the timing is critical. Timing is important. Timing is really, really important. And the, the language and the colors and the tone, because um, if you are not careful, they will throw you away. They can even arrest you, by the way, as long as you are misleading or, you're, or they may think you're a quack. Yeah, so that's why you need to, first of all, be firm before you are allowed to go to the front line. You need to be very, very firm on what you are saying. That's why I had turned down that offer um, at the peak of cholera epidemic uh, in, in Namayingo and uh, Kayunga. I was not very firm on my cholera model. I said, no, you wait a minute. Wait, wait, a, wait, first wait. So you need to be very careful. You must be very, very careful. And then recently, I think um, there was another, there was another matter on my, on what I'm working on for my PhD, which is Rift Valley Fever. And so it was a discussion and so, which I, which I intentionally caused because of the evidence I generated. So there was a meeting in, in, in Zambia where they called all the people working on Rift Valley fever and I was presenting my evidence. And so they were so excited, they say, okay. So they, 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 they didn't know who I am. So they are saying, who are you, sir? Who are you? Who are you? Why, why are you coming? So by then they realized I was a PhD student. Um, I am at Cambridge. Uh, I work in office of the president. So they kept quiet. But they had begun digging me up. Who, who is this guy? What is he saying? Who are you? I received so many calls. I said, but um, this is the evidence I've got from his singular. <laughs> so when you, so model evidence in two policies is not straightforward. So you need to be smart. You need to be, you need to really be smart and you need to be firm. If you are not firm, you better keep quiet or keep, keep silent. But if you're firm, 
you dive in and you begin influencing influencing decisions. So I said, use common term, common words, and relate to what has been done. And then I said, show how it complements ongoing efforts. So you actually, when I was writing the policy brief for the road traffic uh, crashes uh, for cabinet, I began by showing that the government of Uganda has done this. The, cabinet, the government of Uganda has put traffic officers on the road, has put this, has brought Kawunyemu, the government has done this, the government has constructed the good roads, the government has put road, road signs and the speed limits. The government has put this. The government has put a department for this. The government has done this. However, this is missing. I recommend the following to be done. Now, one thing I want to say that may not be, don't expect that if you, if you made 10 recommendations, all of them will be listened to. If you made 10 and they take on two, that, that's a plus. If you made it 10 and they take on one, that's a plus. Don't get, don't get angry. Don't get annoyed. Don't say that your evidence has not moved into policy. At least you will have started. I should give you another story. I should, this one is very important. Now, due to COVID-19, my, my master's defense at Mbarara University got delayed. I was supposed to defend around um, April and uh, they postponed it. So, but uh, after submitting the report for internal examination and external examination, I proceeded to write a manuscript out of my work. I was had worked on measles outbreak investigation in Kasese. I proceeded to write a manuscript out of my work. I submitted the manuscript to BMC infectious diseases. That manuscript was published in June. Remember, I had not defended the thesis. So the dean, Faculty of Medicine, Mbara University. She, she was looking for researchers to be interviewed who have done studies during outbreaks. They wanted to unearth uh, ethical, ethical issues uh, around um, ethical issues around um, outbreak investigations. Do people have enough time to process and get IRB approvals for outbreak investigations? So she lands on our paper. And she and, and and of course that paper has a corresponding author, and it was me. I had even put my email and my phone number there on that measles outbreak paper. She says, just as she calls me, and I mean I had her number because I was the class president for the for the whole faculty. So I was coordinating all the postgraduate courses at Faculty of Medicine. So I had her number, but of course I knew she doesn't have mine. So I saw her call me. In my heart, I knew. They are now calling me to prepare to go and defend. So she calls me, says, Abel. I said, yes. How are you? I said, I'm fine. Are you a staff or a student at, at, at Barara? I said, oh, I'm a student. At, I'm a student at Barara University. I'm a student. I'm pursuing Masters of Public Health. She said, when did you finish? I said, no, I have not finished. I'm actually waiting graduation. But you have published your paper. I said, yes. Bef uh, this work, I submitted the, the manuscript, the first manuscript, uh, even, even when the examination process was going on. She said, really? I said, yes. And it has been published? I said, yes. And you haven't defended? I said, no, I haven't. She said, OK, give me one minute. Let me get back to you. So she switched, she, she switched me off. And after five minutes, she calls me and says, when do you want to defend your, 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 your thesis? I said, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to defend even tomorrow. She said, okay, let me get back to you. Eh, long story short, the lady was able to turn the tables upside down. The lady was able to turn the tables upside down. And on 1st of September, a defense a dissertation in defense was organized for only one person in the whole of faculty, who is called Abel 
Wilson Walekwa. Now my 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 department was invited to attend. Yet yet in in a real sense, the department presents uh, candidates for the defense. But for this case, the department was invited to, to attend. My supervisor was invited that please you come and introduce the candidate. So he, so my supervisor calls me and says, Abel, how did you navigate this terrain to have your dissertation scheduled for defense? I just laughed. And he laughed and said, Abel, I respect you. I respect you. So long story short, I defended, I proceeded, I moved on. How did I get there? Because the woman, the professor saw my evidence published. And so she got to me. And so for me, I think at that stage, I had, uh, my evidence had gotten into policy maker or policy, policy making. So the audience is critical. We have already still said some of this audience. Uh, my colleague, um, Chief Osedari from University of Cape Town um, has done good work in this line, identifying who are the key stakeholders, who are the who are the the people to look out for, who are the people to to identify, and how do you work with them? There is a training, there is a linking linking modulars to policymakers, improving the data, having the, the ensure the data is the, the data is strong. This is what Joan is saying. Joan says, uh uh, the way I'm seeing my model, I'm not trusting it. You first of all wait. Let's not go to conclusions. Let me first go and, and first of all revisit my model. That's what happens. You are improving the quality of the model because it has an implication on how people trust you and not trust you. And there are various ways. There are various stakeholders here, like the government, the modelers, the coordinating bodies, the students. Um, <clears throat> what needs to be done? Uh, what should what needs to be done? So I'll just share this and I'll share this paper with you so I can read in details. Uh, you can train people, you can empower them, but the packaging matters a lot. So let's go to this. Uh, the last, uh, this is my almost my last slide. So I can give you time to, to also debate and make an input. So I just want to ask a very simple question. To the Ugandan team who is who are here, um, you just mentioned the name of this person. The Ugandan team who are here. Just an immutant mention the name. Just an immutant mention his name. Mohammed. Okay, that's great. So you've mentioned that. Supposing we have our modeling evidence on TB and we want him to call, we want him to take up what we are saying how can we package it i just want two people just raise, just raise your hand and speak how can we package information for him to take it to take up what we are saying i just want two people just raise up your hand and you give it a shot Anyone ready to try? How do you package the evidence to ensure this gentleman, as you know him, takes up the, the recommendations you are coming up with? Brian, you proceed. I think it's supposed to be as simple as possible. And by simple, I mean at least use more visuals, graphs, pie charts that can be easily understood rather than putting it in words for someone to read. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Noah, what, how could you package the information for this gentleman to understand and take up the recommendations you're having? Noah, you are muted. Um, I, I think the best option would probably be that you you use emotional intelligence try to be intelligence be empathetic and try to put yourself in his shoes and try to draft something he can probably understand best understand use more visuals like brian said then you use um, a bit of very easy to understand english things like that and draft something you think and suppose 
he can understand. You can do that by getting people you think have the same mental capacity like him and first present to them. You you do a pilot about it, then yeah. you go ahead to think. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I just want to show you, are you seeing these, these youth on the right, on my right hand side? Are you seeing these people on the right hand side? Yes. Yeah, they have got some evidence. They have got some evidence and they are taking action. These youth you see, they are in action. You can see people in the windows are looking at them. They are taking action. So somebody must have given it, packaged information for them. I want you to, I want somebody to unmute and say, how do you think the information was packaged to them for them to be charged like the way they are charged? Someone just raise that, just up and mute, and then, yeah, yeah, who can you give it a shot? Wow. Yeah, who can you give it a shot? Yeah, who is not there? Who can give it a shot? Gabriel. Gabriel. Hi. Yeah, you see these people are charged. How do you think the information was packaged for them to take this action? Uh, I'm not sure, but I think that they might be, but they, they took to some sensitization activities. Uh, I'm not sure, it might be posters or through the, the, the head of the community. You think they could have been sensitized? They could yes. have used the posters. Mm, yeah. Okay. 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 Um. Let's see. let me get another person. Let me get another person. Jean. Jean, are you there? John. John, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, yes. Sorry about the background noise. Um, okay. What do you? How do you uh, think? How do you think they package it for them to take this action? How do you think they package the information? Okay, uh, a trial. I might be wrong, but uh, giving the Kenyan context, um, if the information one touches on pertinent issues, for example, unemployment, and it's channeled through the social media, uh, and especially. In Kenya, you, uh, the youth are usually on social media. So if you touch on a very important topic, of which most of them are unemployed, and use a medium whereby they spend most of their times and give reasons as to why there is so much unemployment, especially touching on why the government is causing unemployment. <laughs> I think they will be mad. They'll be mad. Uh, just a wild guess. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me hear from uh, Winnie. Winnie. Winnie can see me. How do you think the message was packaged for these people to take action? First of all, she used the, The stakeholders, I see stakeholders who are involved here, who are at the end of the day, are final people who take up interventions. Um, I'm looking at the photo as it is. Yeah, how uh, do you think, actually, me, I want you to think beyond this photo. Something triggered this. Something triggered this, and there is evidence which they get, which they got, which triggered this. How do you think it was packaged before we see this? I request to pass. Okay, okay. <laughs> we can continue that conversation longer, but I have another candidate here. I have another candidate here. Um, how can we first of all, what's his name? 
Uh, just use the chat and text his name. I know for Ugandan, for Ugandan fellows, they will know him. Just chat, text in the chat. I don't see something in the chat. I don't see anything. What is his name? Okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, as we know him, how can you package information for him to take action? How can you package it? Oh, be actually, before you forget the, the point I wanted to mention, this gentleman, the best packaging platform is using an audiovisual. Audiovisual. You get a small one minute video showing your model and what you are recommending. One minute, a small video because he can watch it. He can watch it. He can even request the speaker to play it on parliament. Says, Mr. Speaker, I want you to play this one, one minute video. I want you to see how big the problem of TB is in Kawempe. Can you can you play this video? Now, such a guy, don't waste time with your with your journal manuscript and words. What you do, get audiovisual. Get a, you go to the studio, play a one minute video clip with your such question, what the model is showing, and what should we, what should Kawempe, what should people do in Kawempe or Uganda? What should we do? You actually even use a very catching title. Unless we do this, Uganda is finished. Unless we do this, Kawempe is finished. So there he will watch the video very well. Okay, let's go to this one here. Ibrahim Munganda, Kira Municipality. How, uh, somebody should just, just unmute and speak. How do we package for him? How do we package for him? Um, Professor, can you give it a shot? Professor, can you give it a shot? Huh. Can I, can... I pass. I pass to Talema. But why? Professor, why? Don't you know him? Okay. Professor, don't you know him? I know him. You just I'm try. How can, you get, how can you package information for him to take action? I think you need to... Um deliver it in relation to the area where he's leading and also show him how how what you're studying about will affect the people he's leading and how it will affect his standing as a leader of wherever he is and also how it could help him maybe get more votes if he takes action on it yeah probably that's what i could say about it Okay, let's hear from Gabriel. Gabriel. Hi. Based on what Joe said uh, about the guy <clears throat> with a, 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 the red uh, cap, and I believe if you research and found out that the other guy is a journalist, right? Yeah, he's a journalist, yeah. And I think that to, to make more impact or to raise some... Uh, interest in him we might be interested in writing a report a written report and giving as much details as about uh, our research question our research interest and the outcomes and then yeah with uh, some some figures and then yeah. he might be thank yeah. you okay uh noah <laughs> Noah, proceed. Noah, please proceed. Ah, Noah is not here. 
Let me give another person another chance. Um, <laughs> Nuwa, can you speak? Okay. Okay, here, yeah, who can you speak? Yeah, yes. who you speak? Um, <clears throat> actually, to add on what uh, add on what Gabriel said, uh, the way I've seen some with you for the time I've watched him and um, the way he debates on on the parliament floor. I think the best way to package for him something for action is make sure that um, the facts you're presenting are in um, figures, simplified. Uh, actually, I think you can use more of the proportions uh, in a kind of way. He's a, he's a man of facts. And I believe yeah. if you bring your, 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 your recommendation out without facts, even in yeah. figure form, he won't, he, 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 won't, he won't catch his attention. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Yehu. Thank you. Uh, Roland, yes. Yes, Roland. Roland, yes. R Roland, can you speak? Okay. We are missing Roland, but I wanted him to to also shoot. Uh, I can, you cannot unmute. Sorry. Sorry, Roland. Let me see. You try now. Roland, can you try? Sorry about that. Should be a network challenge there. But let's let's proceed. So colleagues have put uh, a policy brief uh, in front of us. And um, uh, let's let all of you use the chat to say anything about it. Just comment something about it. You just either positive or area for improvement. I'm going to be reading it. We have 10 minutes to go. Just type something in the chat about this policy brief. What is your comment? No, no one is typing. Okay, let me just let's let's hear. Um, Joan, Nant, Joan, what's your comment on this? On this policy brief. Joan. Abel, like you've you've said, like when we are looking at the members of parliament, like Honorable Sam Junganda, a short video of how Ebola is, how someone gets it and its impact after when someone gets it and so on, in a short video will do. Because now such a policy brief like this one is targeting mainly people who are elites. Like, because it will not make sense to a politician. It has, it's too crowded and so on. That's what I think. Okay, thank you so much. John, John you want to make a comment? Uh, yes, um, I hope you can hear me. Sorry. Yeah, very I would loud say and uh, I, I would say it's it needs to be short and sweet. Uh, this is what I mean. Uh, you have nice visuals instead of having so like too many words. Someone will be uh disinterested to read that much. But if you have uh solid points, uh especially presented in a visual, very nice visuals, it 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 will be more impactful than it is. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. And again, there is a comment from Jessica, a lot of wording. One has to be a good reader to extract a point out of it. Noah says it is for allies to understand or the policymaker like a minister of health, but the people like MPs might find it hard to understand. It is too wordy. Many technical words. Please go, keep, keep commenting. Just keep commenting. 
Keep commenting. Keep commenting. Let me get another person to shoot at it again. Brian, can you just make a comment about this? I was actually typing. Okay. Now that you have been... <laughs> well, well, uh, to critique it, in my opinion, I like the visuals. The visuals plus the figures. Normally, when you issue such documents, people normally look at the figures because the figures speak louder than the words. I don't want to use the word Africans, but we like looking at figures, not reading. They don't like reading. So I like the visuals plus the figures. Someone can easily pick very good information from the figures. Because for me, if I just look at the figures, I know community vaccine coverage, and I can see that days from symptom onset, two days, cases you have 13, seven. Someone can actually just pick these figures and feels they enough for him to go and make a very good communication. But again, the words are so many. I yeah. would prefer a one page policy brief. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, Andy. Thank you so much, colleagues. And um, I want to stop it at this. It was nice having uh, a session with you um, on policy brief and policy writing. We'll stop here until the next session.